Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to take a look at the practical aspect of a DC motor in, an, in a uh, series circuit. So let's say we have a DC motor, very simple circuit, we have a 100 volt uh, voltage source driving the motor. Let's say that it, the motor has an internal resistance of 4 ohms. Let's say that the motor requires 5 amps to fully operate at its maximum capacity. Ignore for a moment the back EMF and we'll show you in just a moment what that is. But first we want to find out what is the EMF of the DC motor. And just like we do with a voltage source, we can say that the EMF is simply equal to the voltage provided by the voltage source minus the voltage drop across the circuit, which is the current times internal resistance. So if we're going to calculate that, this is equal to 100 volts minus the current, which is 5 amps, times the resistance, 4 ohms, so we can see that it's equal to 100 volts minus 20 volts, which is 80 volts. Now here's the interesting part, and we'll draw the connection to the back EMF in just a moment. What is that? What is that EMF of the motor? Well, actually, when the voltage source, 100 volts, begins to drive the motor, the motor will set up its own EMF, which will set up its own current, its own magnetic field, which will actually oppose the battery that caused it to turn around in the first place, begin to fight back because after all, the DC motor is a coil with a magnetic field and is going to try to prevent the current from increasing by pushing back. And so there's going to be an EMF produced by the motor that works against the battery that, that causes the turn in the first place. What is the power provided to the motor? Well, the power provided, the equation is, equal to the current times the voltage that pushes the current through the circuit. So in this case, that is 5 amps multiplied times 100 volts, which is equal to 500 watts. So that's the power provided by the, by the battery right here, or by the voltage source. What is the power consumed in the circuit? Well, the power consumed is equal to I squared times the resistance of the circuit. In this case, that is 5 amps squared times the resistance of 4 ohms. So that's 25 times 4, which is 100 watts. So 500 watts provided, 100 watts consumed. Well, what is the power, the mechanical power delivered? Well, the power delivered is going to be equal to the power provided minus the power consumed, which is equal to 500 watts minus 100 watts. Well, that's equal to 400 watts. Watts. So we have 400 watts provided to do work, to do mechanical work with the DC motor. 100 watts is simply dissipated, consumed means dissipated. 100 watts is simply lost due to heat. So we have a 500 watts provided, 100 watts lost. We have 400 watts left over to do mechanical work with the motor. What's the efficiency? Well, the efficiency is defined by the, the mechanical power delivered, power delivered, divided by the power provided. So in this case, that is 400 watts delivered divided by 500 watts provided, which means it's about 80% efficient. Finally, the back EMF. What is the back EMF? Well, the back EMF is the EMF produced by the motor, which pushes back against the voltage produced by the power source right here. How do we calculate the back EMF? Well, we already know that the back EMF is going to be 80 volts, but there's another way of looking at the back EMF. Again, what we can do here, and let me write that down here, so we're looking for the back EMF, and how do we find that? Okay, first of all, we know that we have a current of 5 amps going to the circuit and an internal resistance of 4 ohms. So what we can say is that the net voltage produced by the whole circuit is going to be equal to I times R. Or another way to do it, let me, let me rewrite the equation. Uh, using Ohm's law, we say that the current through the circuit, that's a better way of looking at it, the current through the circuit is equal to the net voltage of the circuit divided by the resistance in the circuit. Now we know that the net voltage is going to be equal to the voltage provided by the battery minus the back EMF. So let's write it like this, the back EMF, which is the voltage produced by the motor which pushes against the voltage of the battery that makes the motor turn in the first place, divided by the resistance. Now we know that the current in the circuit is 5 amps, so we say 5 amps is equal to the voltage provided by the battery minus the back EMF, EMF back, divided by the resistance, the resistance is 4 ohms. We can solve this equation for back EMF and let's see if we get the same 80 volts over there. 
All right, so first of all, we'll cross multiply this right here. So we have 20 is equal to 100 minus the back EMF. And then sure enough, when we solve that, we bring this over to the left side, we bring to the right side, we can then see that the back EMF will end up to be again 100 volts minus 20 volts, which is 80 volts, which means that the motor being in the circuit like that actually, actually acts like a battery that is pointed in the opposite directions, like this one right here. This is therefore an 80 volt battery with the positive end that way, negative end, and that way, pushing in the opposite direction. So while the motor is turning, the net voltage providing current flow to the circuit will be the 100 volts minus the 80 volts, or just 20 volts. When the motor is turning, it acts as if there's only 20 volts pushing the motor. So here we now realize back EMF, 80 volts. So the net voltage in the circuit is 100 minus 80, which is 20 volts pushing the, the current to the circuit. Well, now that makes sense because you can say that I, the current in the circuit, is equal to V net divided by R. The net voltage will be 100 volts minus 80 volts divided by the resistance of 4 ohms, which is equal to 20 volts divided by 4 ohms, which is equal to 5 amps, which is exactly the current in the circuit. Now, what happens when, let's say, that that motor is driving a drill, the drill bit gets stuck, the motor stops turning, what happens now? Well, it turns out that when the motor stops turning, the back EMF goes from 80 volts to 0 volts, which means that the net voltage goes from the 20 volts all the way back up to 100 volts. This will now be the voltage driving the motor. The motor is no longer providing a back EMF, providing that negative voltage, it's mostly negating the 100 volts right here. So when the motor jams, the back EMF goes to 0. So EMF back goes to zero. Now what happens is that the net voltage, V net, is now going to be 100 volts minus zero volts because there's no longer any back EMF. So the voltage driving current to the circuit now is 100 volts. And now I, when the motor jams, the current to the circuit when the motor jams, is going to be equal to V net over R. In this case, it's going to be 100 volts divided by 4 ohms which is now 25 amps. So going from 5 amps, what it normally runs at, it's 25 amps. Wow, what's the power dissipation in the drill now? Well, the power dissipation in the drill is going to be equal to I square R, and that's going to be 25 amps squared times the resistance of 4 ohms. 25 squared is 625 times 4, that's 24, that's 2,500 watts. So now you're sending so much current through the drill or through the motor that the dissipation of heat in the motor, in the closed the motor, is 2,500 watts rather than the 100 watts that it was before. And at 2,500 watts, that motor will be far overheated. The wires will melt. Everything will melt. Everything will break. And it doesn't take long before the motor will simply start smoking, starts burning, and start melting, and it no longer will be functional. So that's why whenever you're working with a motor like a vacuum cleaner or a drill, you never want to get to the point where something stops the motor from spinning because the back EMF will go to zero. The voltage driving current to the circuit is now the net voltage of the power source. Current is way higher than it's meant to be and the power dissipation to the motor is going to be phenomenal and will destroy it in a very short period of time. So immediately unplug, turn off the power so that this won't happen when that happens to you. And now you know a little bit about how electric motors work.